Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church. I've got a pile of announcements here this morning. Um, first of all, there are registration cards in the back of the seats in front of you, and uh, you can fill those out for if you have any questions or anything for the pastor, or if you're a visitor, you can fill out your information on there. And there's a place on the back for prayer requests. If you have a specific prayer request you wanted to mention, uh, you can do that. Also, today we're taking up the offering for the hurricane relief, and if you'd forgotten about that, like some of us have, um, the, you could grab one of these envelopes out of the back of the seat, put your number on it, if you remember your number, put your name on it, how much, and uh, just write on there, hurricane, so that we know it's going to the hurricane relief. Uh, that is uh, to help out with all of the devastation that's been going on in the southeast part of the country. Uh, daylight savings time is ending this next weekend, so make sure that you fall back on your clocks so that you can make sure that you're on time and ready for church. If you have articles for the November newsletter, please be sure to include those uh, to Lynn. Let her know what you need to have put in there. And we have the Operation Christmas Child. This is the last Sunday to fill boxes for Operation Christmas Child. There are still boxes in the hallway and a lot of items in the uh, room 26, I think. 16, 16, sorry, <laughs> thank you. Um, in room 16, I knew there was a six in there somewhere. Um, anyway, it, there are a lot of items in there already picked out. It doesn't cost you anything to fill the box from the items that are in there, so you can just go ahead and fill. It does cost $10 to send the box, so if you can afford to uh, include a, give $10 for that, that would be appreciated too. But you can see we've got several of them up here. I don't know, Marilyn, have you guys given a count? Fifty-three. Woo! And I think the goal was fifty. So, but we can still we can still fill some more. So awesome! Thank you so much. Um, inside your bulletin, there is something about the blood drive, which is going to be on November the twelfth. And if you can participate in that and donate blood, that would be greatly appreciated. There is a QR code that you can scan uh, if you want to um, set up an appointment, or you can call the office. You can talk to Pastor and uh, get set up there for uh, donating blood. It's going to be on the November the 12th from 2 to 5, and it will be here at the church. Uh, also, over on the uh, table, we have the Bible readings for November, so if you've been following along with that, you can get your new copy of the Bible readings. And... I hope I mentioned the community outreach. Uh, if I didn't, I'll mention it again. Community outreach is meeting is, is, uh, directly after Sunday school this morning uh, to discuss some things. And my last announcement includes Pastor John. If I can get Pastor John to come up here. This has been Pastor Appreciation Month, and so if you're not on a board or a committee or something where you've been working with Pastor John, you might not know some of the things that he does. And he's been pretty busy. He's, he gets involved in a lot of things. He's with the board, helps out with the board and some of the decisions we have to make there. He teaches Sunday school. He teaches Thursday morning Bible study. He comes to breakfast with a bunch of ladies. <laughs> and I think the men's group too. And um, so, uh, he visits the shut-ins, and I don't know, there's just this big old long list. He organized the uh, blood drive, and so a lot of different things. But anyway, on behalf of the church, we would like to thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And let's prepare our hearts for worship. Hey, I'm Tommy. And I'm Eddie, and we are the Skid Guys, and we just wanted to say... Thank you. Yes. Thank th you yes, for thank giving to the Lord. Yeah. I'm, I'm a life that was changed. I know that. So thank you. Okay. Well, that's kind of that song. 
But I don't know about a song. I know this, though, as long as we're saying thank you. I dreamed I went to heaven, and, and you were actually there with me. That was weird because I don't even know you. But, but we walked along the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. I heard the angels singing. Okay, and then someone, this was the coolest part, someone called your name, which is weird because I don't even know it, but that's the way dreams work, right? And they looked at you, and they said, thank you. Thank you for giving to the Lord. That's still I'm a life that's changed. Still a song. Still a song. I don't know what you're talking about. But we wanted to say thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Besides so the song, we wanted to say thank you for all that you do, all the hours that you put into everything that you do, as far as building a staff, loving on the congregation, shepherding people. Thanks for what you do. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that for giving to the Lord. Okay. It's still I'm a song. life that's changed. Still the song. All right. We hope that you have a great Sunday. And hey, let's give these pastors a big round of applause, shall we? Thank you. Thank you. For giving to the Lord. You can stop now. Okay. Good morning. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come into your house this morning, this family of believers, we, we come this morning and we thank you for all the blessings you give us, all the blessings you give this church and each one of us. We also this morning lift up our prayers to you, our Heavenly Father. You know what each one of us needs, and Lord God, you know the strength that you need to provide to each person here. But again, this morning, we lay all of those things aside and we worship you with our words and our songs and all that you give us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning. Good to see all of you. We want to welcome all of our guests this morning. We're glad you're with us this morning. And since you just saw the video, if you look over there, you'll see 53 boxes. And that's, we've exceeded our goal, but we are not done because we have until next Sunday. So if you have not filled a Christmas shoe box and you still want to, or you've already filled one and you'd like to do another one, all you've got to do is go down to room 16 and there. And again, we want to thank Marilyn and Debbie for all their hard work. In fact, I would like you to give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> yeah, I know you're sitting there going, he doesn't have to do that. Yes, he does, because you ladies have done a lot of work. And if, honestly, all the years I've been doing Christmas shoe boxes, this was the best because they have it all set up for us to just go in and fill our boxes with all the stuff that they have and then all it costs you and I is ten dollars to pay for the shipping so again if you'd like to fill another box or you haven't filled one up yet and you want to please do that this morning I want to stop because every once in a while I need to just say thank you to everybody there's a lot of people with a, who do a lot of stuff behind the scenes and it's important for us to just remember them so I want to thank our van drivers Alan Walters and Alan Arvin and Sharon Sample I want to thank Claudia and Kyler and Corda for the music every Sunday I want to thank Jim and Selena and Corda and Dina who run our soundboard and Rich Sample and Barb Arvin get us online on YouTube and Barb is back doing that right now and for those of you who are watching and for all of you here if you haven't already we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, it's FBC Macomb and we are very thankful for all of you who have and we just will thank God for the technology that helps us get the word out every Sunday you see you have a insert about a blood drive I know the church hasn't if you've had a blood drive it was years and years ago but I this is very important to me I've had blood drives in almost every church I've ever pastored and people have said to me they said why is a blood drive so important to you well really honestly think about this the blood of Jesus Christ saves my soul if I'm laying in the hospital and I need a pint of blood or I'm going to die your blood could save my life it really doesn't get any more complex than that you give a pint of blood you have the potential of saving someone's life and honestly I think that's kind of cool I don't know about you so for those of you who have given in the past I encourage you to come on the 12th of November and give again and for those of you who have never donated before I promise I will stand right beside the the place where you're sitting and I will talk to you the whole time and just tell you don't look at it just look at me don't look at it just look at me and I have done that many times as well but I'm gonna sweeten the pot this morning everybody in our church family who comes and gives blood or even attempts to give blood I'll take you out to lunch everybody so yes Virginia there is a Santa Claus and yes First Baptist there is a free lunch but it costs you a pint of blood so if that's something that encourages you to come and give you'd like to go out for lunch and I'm dead serious I used to do that a lot in years past and uh, because I want to thank you for taking the time and coming and donating on the sheet of paper in your bulletin there is a QR code down at the bottom take your phone and just shoot that QR code and you will go directly to impact 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 life's website where you can sign in and you can pick what time you want to come on our to our blood drive and that's right there on that QR code on the piece of paper on our prayer list got a few names just to mention to you besides the folks that are on our list already uh, Paula Black 
fell and um, hurt herself. So let's keep Paula in our prayers as she heals up. And Ruth's daughter, Jackie, Jackie Vaughn, is in serious health, has a serious health condition, and Jackie needs our prayers as well. And then Marilyn and Debbie had two nieces that both had a death in their family, and then Christina, her niece, also had a death in her family. So this past week, we've got a lot of families right here in our church who have had a death in a death of a loved one. And so, again, all I'd ask you to do is just keep them in your prayers and just ask God to give them that comfort and that peace that uh, comes only from him. Uh, there's a name that I forgot to get on the list, and that's Denise Hoff. So if you would write that on your list and remember her. Uh, and the rest of the folks, we're thankful right now that we don't have anyone in the hospital we don't have anyone seriously ill. We have a lot of people who are still battling cancer, and we want to keep them in our prayers. And we have those who are at home and not feeling well. And again, we ask God to give them the strength that they need. So at this time, let's take a few moments of silent prayer. You talk to the Lord about the things and the people that are in your heart, and then I'll close us in a word of prayer. Dear God, I thank you for another Sunday, another beautiful Sunday to be in your house. And I thank you for this house. I thank you for this church. I thank you for this building, Lord, because that's really all it is, Lord. It's a building because you live here. This is your place. Your spirit is here all the time. And Lord, we are your church. We are the body of Christ, and we are honored to be a part of that. So, Lord, bless us this morning. Bless each and every person that's here. Bless them, Lord, for making your house a priority in their life this morning. And bless those for, of our church family who are gone. They're traveling. They have other commitments today. We pray that you would bless them, Lord, and help them to come back and be with us next Sunday. We pray for those who are at home and not feeling well. We ask that you would touch them, dear God. We pray for those who recently have had procedures or who have had surgeries and they're healing, Lord, we pray that you would heal them quickly. And for those, Lord, who have procedures and surgeries coming up in the near future, we pray, Lord, that you would bless them as well. Lord, we know you are the healer. We know that it is your hand that reaches down and you heal people. Sometimes you heal immediately. Sometimes you heal through therapy or medicine or surgery. But dear God, we thank you for the wisdom that you have given to people so that uh, they have helped people live good and productive lives. Thank you, dear Lord, for all these things. Thank you for our homes, our cars, the food we eat, the paychecks we receive, all of it, Lord. It all comes from you. And today we just honor you. We thank you and we praise you. For those of our church family and others that we know who are battling cancer, Lord, we ask that you would touch them today. Heal them, take their pain away, and keep them strong and healthy, dear God. We thank you, dear Lord, for our nation. And even though there's many things, Lord, we'd like to see different, we are still the greatest nation on the planet, and that's because of you. So please, bless our nation. We have an election coming up soon, Lord. I pray that you would give everybody the wisdom they need as they vote. But Lord, Please encourage everyone to go and vote. 
And dear Lord, we give, we give our leaders to you this morning. We ask that you would give them wisdom and give them understanding. We pray for our military men and women, wherever they are serving, Lord, watch over them and keep them safe. We pray for missionaries that are serving you around the world today. Please watch over them and bless them as they share the gospel with people everywhere. And Lord, for policemen and policewomen, we ask that you would bless them today and keep them safe. And Lord, I pray for every church in America right now that is preaching Jesus as the only way to heaven. Bless them, Lord. Bless their pastors, their leaders. And Lord, for those churches that haven't talked about Jesus in years, Lord, we don't judge them. We pray for them. We pray for a revival. We pray that you would just send a spark that would begin a fire in those people's hearts. But right now, Lord, I want to thank you for all your blessings that you have given to this church. I want to thank you for the way that you have provided for us and you have helped us to see your direction. Lord, may we always follow it. No matter what happens, may we always follow Jesus Christ. And today, Lord, as we take up this offering, May this money be used to honor you here in Macomb and in Illinois and all around the world. And we'll be sure to give you all the praise and all the thanks. For it's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen.
In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until it's season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence Seeking word and melody There's a dawn in every darkness Bringing hope to you and me From the past will come the future What it holds a mystery Unrevealed until it sees something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time in in our doubt there is believing in our life eternity in our death a resurrection at the last a victory unrevealed until it's season something God alone can see unrevealed until it's season, something yet unknown which God alone can see. Thank you, Selena. That was absolutely lovely. Thank you very much. We've got a lot of scripture to read this morning and a lot of single verses. We're going to start out by reading out of Deuteronomy. Uh, the first two verses aren't in your um, sermon notes, and that's because I forgot to put them there. I know none of you have that problem, so I'm going to just have to deal with it. We're in Deuteronomy chapter 30, and we're going to read starting at verse 15. So if you want to follow along in your Bibles, I'll give you a minute to get there. The book of Deuteronomy is Moses recalling to everyone, the children of Israel, about what had already transpired and what was going to take place in the future as they went into the promised land. And so we read, starting in verse 15, Moses says, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity, in that I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You will not prolong your days in the land where you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants, by loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him. For this is your life and the length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. 
And then we're going to read a couple of very familiar verses out of the book of Joshua, chapter 24, starting at verse 14, where we read Joshua say these words, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served which were beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and who did these great signs in our sight and preserved us through all the way in which we went and among all the peoples through whose midst we passed. The Lord drove out from before us all the peoples, even the Amorites who lived in the land. We will also serve the Lord for he is our God. Then Joshua said to the people, You will not be able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done good to you. And I know I read two more verses than what's on the screen. Now let's go to the book of Proverbs. And we're just going to pick... God just laid a few Proverbs on my hard to go along with the sermon this morning. The first one is out of Proverbs 1-7, where we read these words. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And then our next one is out of Proverbs 10, verse 14. And it reads like this. Wise men store up knowledge, but with the mouth of the foolish, ruin is at hand. And verse 21 the lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of understanding. And then go over to chapter 13. Excuse me. Chapter 12, verse 15. And it reads, The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. And then over in 13, at verse 16, Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool displays folly. And verse 20, he who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And then I'm going to go to verse, excuse me, chapter 17 and read verse 28, which actually is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. Even a fool, when he keeps silent, is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is considered prudent. I don't know how many of you have ever, ever heard. Everybody thought I was smart. No, everybody thought I was dumb. And then I opened my mouth and removed all doubt. As long as you're not talking, people don't know whether you're smart or whether you're not. So that's where that proverb came from, out of Proverbs um, 17. And then our last one is out of Proverbs 26, verse 6. And it says, He cuts off his own feet and drinks violence, who sends a message by the hand of a fool. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer, please. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the wisdom that lies on each page of your word. Thank you for the privilege and honor to read it, Thank you for the privilege that is mine to preach it. Thank you for Selena's great song. Thank you for the great songs that we sang. Thank you, Lord, for every life that's here. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Meet the need, please, inside of each and every person. Strengthen us for a new week. Right now, Lord, as we worship you and as we honor you, may your spirit speak through me. And I thank you that we are all here together in your house. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You have the right to choose. In case no one's told you that lately. You have the God-given right to choose. You can choose the way you want to live. Now, I may not agree with the way you choose to live. I may not agree with your choice of lifestyle. But it is still your choice to live 
the way you want. And you are free to live in America the way you want. And as long as you stay within the laws of our land, you can live any way you want. Back years ago, I helped with the Department on Aging here in Illinois. And I would go visit people who were living in filth. They were living just in rooms stacked with garbage. And as much as I tried to help them see that they could live better, they did not care. That's how they wanted to live. And I always wondered, was, is there a law? Is there a law somewhere that says you can't live in a room filled with garbage? And there's not. If you choose to live that way, that's the way you can, you can live. And you can choose to live outside the laws of our land. And many people choose that way, don't they? That's why our prisons are full today with people who have chosen to live outside of the laws. See, we're not puppets, folks. We're not puppets. God isn't some master puppeteer with a bunch of marionettes hanging down from heaven. There are no strings. You choose. We choose. There's no leash. Nothing to pull. Nobody pulls you here or there. You get to make those choices. So you come to a fork in the road. And you look ahead and you see there's plan A and plan B. That's all there is. Now, all the evidence tells you that plan A is the best way to go. The Bible tells you that plan A is the way to go. The Holy Spirit tells you that's the way to go. Your family and your friends lovingly say to you, plan A is the way to go. And after you have all that information, you have all that, that knowledge, you still can choose to take plan B. And many people do. But I want to remind all of you today that if you go against God and if you go against his word, there will be consequences. I'm a man of God. i got to tell you the truth. People oftentimes don't want to hear that. But if you go against God, you're going to suffer consequences somewhere down the road. And I simply want you to understand that when you choose the opposite way and you suffer those consequence, consequences, you don't really have that much right to come back and complain because you were warned, you were told, you knew, you knew which way to go and you chose to go the opposite way. Now, I may not agree with your choice, but if you come and ask me my opinion, I will tell you. John, I'm going to sell everything I own, buy a boat, and sail around the world. What do you think? <laughs> do you really want to know what I think about that? Yes, I do. I want your honest opinion. I don't think that's a good idea. And then you tell other people, well, John called me stupid. John said I was ignorant for, trying, for thinking of this. Well, no, John didn't say that. I simply said, you asked my opinion, and I said, no, I don't think that's a good idea. If you don't want my opinion, thank you very much. <laughs> and remember, if you ask my opinion, and I tell you, I'm not judging you. I'm answering you. Always remember that. We live in a society today that if, I, if someone says, what do you think, and I tell them what I think, all of a sudden they turn around and say, I'm judging you. No, I'm not. I'm answering you. However, if I hear about your plan to sell all you own, buy a boat and sail around the world, and I haven't spoken to you, I, haven't, I don't have all my information, and the first words out of my mouth are, well, that's a stupid idea. I've just judged you. Now I'm wrong because I have judged you without talking to you and finding out what in the world you're thinking about because you want to sell everything you have and sail around the world in a boat. Solomon writes a lot about fools, doesn't he? Have you ever noticed that when you read through the book of Proverbs? We only read half of the verses today, not even half, that talk about a fool. But I want to make sure that we are all on the same page of what Solomon means as a fool. Because today in our society, a fool is often looked at as someone who is not very bright. Also a fool is someone who always 
is joking about everything and doesn't take anything serious. And people say, well, he just, don't mind him, he's just a fool. That's not what Solomon's talking about. The fool that Solomon is talking about is the person who knows exactly what they are to do, they know exactly how to do it, and they know exactly when to do it, and they choose not to. That's the fool that Solomon is talking about. So, you have the right to be a fool. Or you have the right to be a wise person. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it's entirely up to you. You can be a kind, sensitive, caring person. You can be a loving person. You can be a merciful person in a unmerciful world. Or you can be a fool who doesn't accept the truth and won't look at the light. They are unwilling to. And please remember that one word, unwilling. So when we talk about a fool, we're not talking about an ignorant person who doesn't understand. We're talking about someone who is unwilling to accept the truth. There's a lot of people who know exactly what to do when it comes to their relationship with Jesus Christ. They've heard it. They recognize it. They know. They know they should ask him into their heart. They know they should ask for forgiveness. They know he's the light of the world, and they know he is what they need. But they are unwilling to accept it. They are unwilling to follow his light. And may I remind all of you and everybody watching that when we don't follow the light, there are eternal consequences. Now, I've made a lot of mistakes in 70 years, and I suffered some consequences because of it. But because God is a merciful God, and God is a forgiving God, and the blood of Jesus still covers my sins all the time, I'm standing here this morning talking to you because God helped me bounce back from my mistakes. There is no bouncing back from eternal mistakes. I have to make sure you understand the difference. Mistakes we make here on this earth, we can come back from. Mistakes we make that last for all eternity, we don't ever come back from. That's why it's so important that people are willing, willing to accept the truth and see the light and follow that light. So, this morning, you can choose wisdom or you can reject it. I don't have any strings on you. All I can do is talk to you. But it's still your choice. It's your God-given choice. Not just an American choice. People who live in the most subjected government-run countries in the world still have free choice. They can choose to follow the light or they can choose not to follow the light. So this morning, two words. Choose Jesus. Period. And then at the bottom of my piece of paper, I wrote two more words. Choose wisely. And then I smiled because I said, oh, I usually don't do this. But I remembered a movie, and I thought, oh, I want to play a clip from that movie to just end this. So roll with me. I apologize for the, I think there's a commercial before it because we couldn't get rid of it. So if there is, forgive me. But then this is, this is like 50 seconds long. So if you kick the lights...
made out of gold. That's the cup of a carpenter. And if you're and if you're sitting there saying, what in the world was he thinking? That's okay. Choose wisely. You have the freedom to choose, ladies and gentlemen. So use that freedom wisely and always. Choose Jesus. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. It has been a great day in your house, and we have been honored to be here and worship you. So today, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to each and every heart here. Lord, if there's needs in people's hearts today, help them to be willing to look to you. Watch over us as we conclude here. Bless Sunday school. Bless the rest of this day, and bless this new week that's coming. And Lord, just thank you for all of your love and your mercy. And just continue, Lord, to show us the way you want us to go. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing an invitation hymn that is not in your hymnal. It's a chorus that I grew up on, and I know many of you know it. And as we sing this If you have a decision that you need to make for Jesus Christ, I invite you to make that where you stand. If you want to talk to me about that, then let's get together and talk about that. The important thing is, whatever the Lord is speaking to you about this morning, please listen to him, and let's just stand together, please, as as we sing this song. Now, is it next, next Saturday we change time? Is that correct? Yeah, there you go. Okay, real quick. Many, 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 many moons ago, my mom, my sister, and I,
pulled up to church and the parking lot was empty. And my mom sat there for a minute because it was like, you know, she said, what in the world? Where is everybody? And then all of a sudden she said, oh, I didn't put the clocks back. I didn't set the clocks back an hour. She said, we're an hour early to church. And then she looked at my sister and I and said, and if you ever tell anyone this, I'll kill you both. So I did not ever tell anybody that story until after my mother passed away. <laughs> if you come to, if, and you know what, we, most of us have cell phones and the cell phones change. But in the old days, we had to turn our alarm clock back. And if we didn't, you would show up for church an hour early. So if you show up next Sunday an hour early, you can just come in my office and we'll just sit down and talk. Okay? But other than that, God bless you. God keep you. And just keep trusting him, folks. Keep trusting him. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Again, it has been our honor and our privilege to be here in your house. We pray that you would bless us and that you would use us. And Lord, just fill us so that we can stay strong in our faith. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.